My father was a teacher and he instilled in me the love of reading. It's so important when children are growing up to read to them, to uh, sit them on your lap, to trace the lines of the story with your finger, to talk about the illustrations. When I read a book, I see it in my mind's eye and I see it as if it's on a stage. A long time ago, when castles and monasteries dotted the land and knights went forth to do brave deeds, when women wove beautiful tapestries and minstrels played for pauper and prince alike, there lived a humble musician named Simeon. Though uneducated and penniless, he was a gentle, nature-loving man, and music was his passion. In the case of Simeon's Gift, that little book has had the most amazing journey. Uh, I wrote it with my daughter, Emma. We wrote a story about a young musician in medieval times um, trying to find himself. We've always thought that integrating reading with the arts was a natural because they seem so, in fact they are so synergistic, the arts and reading. It was suggested that we might do it as a play for children and I was delighted because that's exactly where my heart is. If I can make one of my stories come alive and children can see it and imagine it for themselves. And the next thing I knew was that somebody suggested, why don't you write it with a symphony orchestra in mind? Why don't you have a big orchestra behind you that illustrates the book in a different way? One of the best opportunities for teachers with books like this, I think, is, is the concept of reader's theater, of taking a scene from a book or the whole story and adapting it with kids. There are a whole bunch of different ways to do that. I mean, there's a very sort of structured approach to reader's theater out there where there are scripts available and, you know, all kinds of formats and, and templates online. Or you can just go very organic with it and um, work with the students to adapt the script, to break it into scenes, to assign characters to the individual students. And just start improvising. Just start talking and let's see what happens. And you can begin to grow that into a scene. It gives them an opportunity to actually put themselves in the shoes of the characters. When Mom and I started writing together, it just felt natural to bring our experience with the performing arts to what we do with the children's books. We think very visually, we think very dramatically. Because I come from the theater, I think I use the images of the theater and of movies a great deal. I see it in my head. I can't help but think visually that way. When we write, we think in terms of, you know, opening sequence and then scene change and then, a, you know, sort of an 11 o'clock number, as they say, moving towards the climax. And, you know, we think very dramatically and, and we've tried to focus our passion for the arts in much of what we write. When she and I write together, uh, I think she's the nuts and bolts of the story. And I think my contribution is more the flights of fancy and the bits of imagination. The very first book I ever wrote was a book called Mandy. When I finished Mandy, I so enjoyed the writing process that I felt a little bit, a little bit lonely. And I sort of wanted to write some more. I so enjoyed the characters that I was living with. The last of the really great wangdoodles uh, is all about using your imagination. I was looking for a word in a thesaurus one day and I suddenly stumbled across the word wangdoodle. I found a description of a wangdoodle and it was a humorous mythical creature of fanciful and undefined nature. And I thought, heavens, if it's undefined, maybe I could be the one to define it. My daughter Emma and I wrote a story about the theater called The Great American Mousical. I was in a show on Broadway, and it was discovered that there was a little mouse in our wardrobe department. There's an awful lot of mice below the uh, 
stage, you know, way, way, way down in, in, in the bowels of the theatre. And a light bulb went off in my head and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be a wonderful way to bring the theatre to children of, of, of a young age. If you can instill a love of reading in your children, you are so far ahead of the curve at school, um, in your life in general, uh, and your, uh, your imagination is so much more lively and it stimulates so much. Uh, I thank heavens for the father that gave me that to begin with.